why an avoidant will not chase you after a breakup. I'm going to answer that question in this video. Hi, this is Lucia with The Art of Love. I'm a dating and relationship expert specializing in helping you get your ex back or to get over your ex and your favorite ex back expert. Welcome back, my no contact army. If you've been a good little soldier, then you have downloaded my app Silencio to help you stay in no contact. And if you haven't, the link is underneath every single video and every single podcast. And if you too would like to join our no contact army, it's very easy. All you have to do is hit the subscribe button and the bell notification and you're in. And to read our manual, go to nocontactsecrets.com where you can read two free chapters before you purchase the book. And of course, the link to that and everything is underneath the video or podcast. So why will an avoidant not chase you after a breakup, even if they broke up with you. Pretty much everyone knows that unless you cheated or took someone for granted, if you're the dumper, it's up to you to try to get your ex back. So what makes the avoidant so different? Well, in order to answer that question, we have to first talk about when will an avoidant actually chase? It's not like they never chase, contrary to popular opinion. <laughs> So they will chase in the beginning when you're dating for the first few weeks or months because it's before any emotional history or attachment has occurred. So they are not yet triggered. In other words, if their interest level is not too high, they have no problem chasing. They'll chase for months if necessary. But once it gets go uh, going up, their interest level, they start to feel vulnerable. And if they think there's a chance of rejection, they'll pull away. They'll also chase after you've been dating for a while uh, if they want to get a commitment because now they feel secure enough that they won't be rejected. However, after a breakup, even if they were the dumper, they don't want to chase. And here are some reasons why. First one is to avoid conflict. Remember, they're avoidance. So they do what? That's right, they avoid. <laughs> now you may think, Oh, they're afraid of confrontation. No, that's not the reason. <laughs> I'm an avoidant and I have no problem with confrontation. It's that we don't want to experience the feeling associated with a conflict or a confrontation. And therefore, we would rather just avoid it. The second reason is that they may feel ashamed or guilty for being a bad partner, for letting you down. They're like a turtle who doesn't feel safe and they go back into their shell and they don't stick their head out again until they feel safe. And if their interest level is high enough, they will be able to overcome the shame or guilt eventually. The third reason is it's too vulnerable of a feeling. They feel it makes them look weak. And if there's one thing that avoidance hate, it's weakness and neediness in both themselves and in other people. It makes it seem like they're dependent on you and that they need you. And that is the last thing they want. They want to appear independent, like they don't need you or anyone. The thought of needing someone is scary because what if that person lets them down? So it's better to not need anyone and to just rely on themselves. And that way they can't be let down. They don't want to give you that much power. That is how avoidance think. The fourth reason is, is that there's a silent agreement between the two of you that you will be doing the chasing, meaning that every time there was an issue or an argument and they pulled away, you went running after them. So if there's now a breakup, why would they behave any differently? Even if they broke up with you, they figure you're going to come looking for them sooner rather than later since you're the one who's anxious, not them. It's generally not coming from a place of manipulation, but from the fact that it's implied that when they pull away, you will chase. And by the way, please give this video a like. It's free to give a like and it will help more people to find it on YouTube. Thank you. All right, the next reason, fear of rejection. They may want to reach out and solve things, but they fear that they may be rejected. And if you broke up with them, they are definitely not going to chase because they already feel rejected and they're not going to risk feeling rejected yet again. An avoidant is not going to chase if they've already been rejected. The sixth reason 
They won't chase if they know they can't or don't want to offer you slash give you what you want or what you deserve. So if you're anxious and you're listening to this, you're thinking, well, why don't they just figure it out? Why can't they work on work on it so that they can give me what I want? Well, if their interest level is high enough, they will reconsider and come back to give you what you want or need. And I'm going to talk more about interest level towards the end of the video because it's going to apply to everything that I'm saying in this video about why an avoidant won't chase after a breakup. So stay tuned. All right, we have just a few more. Number seven, they won't chase right after a breakup because it's easier to just focus on other aspects of their life. Yes, they are repressing their feelings for you. And you need to let them go through that stage because if you contact them when they're in that stage, you will not like their response or you may not get any response at all and then that will set you back. And if you're anxious, then you may spiral and start contacting them and then it just goes downhill from there. So let them go through their stages. Reason number eight, they value composure and non-reactivity. The idea of, ch of chasing is very distressing for an avoidant. Whenever they think about it, they get the ew factor, the ick factor. They see it as chaotic and out of control, and they want to stay away from chaos and drama as much as possible. Reason number nine, they have mixed feelings about what will happen after they chase you. So if they have to both repair and make amends with you and then discuss the future of the relationship, that just might be too much for them. Too much emotion to process. So deactivating the attachment feels like a more efficient way of doing things. And I'm not saying they're doing this consciously. Often it's a subconscious process. And then finally, the final reason we made it. They want to see if you will reach out to them. And this will be evidence that you care. And if you don't reach out to them, they will think that you don't care, even though they are the ones who are supposed to reach out to you unless you cheated or took them for granted. And by taking for granted, I mean that they felt like they weren't important to you. You weren't giving them time. You weren't listening to them. That's what I define as taking for granted. Again, they may be doing this subconsciously, but there's also a good possibility that they are doing it consciously, that they're thinking, you know what? I want to see how interested they are. Even though I broke up with them, I'm going to wait and see if they reach out to me. So that's what is happening if they don't reach out to you because they want to see how much you care. Now, I mentioned that I was going to talk about interest level. And I learned about interest level from my good friend, Doc Love. And he said, interest level trumps everything. So luckily for you, if you were dating an avoidant, you probably, as you were listening to this, thought, oh no, oh my God, I'm screwed. I'm never going to get my avoidant back. They're not going to chase me. They're not going to come after me. Or I'm going to have to break no contact. And I don't want to do that. Because Lucia always says, don't break no contact. What am I going to do? <laughs> well, luckily with an avoidant or with anyone actually, but if you leave them alone, fab will kick in. And I talked about fab in my video titled seven reasons why no contact works on everyone. That video has over 2 million views. I can't believe it. And I will link it in the upper right hand corner here on YouTube. So by leaving them alone, they'll go through their process. They'll go through fab. And if they're interested enough, they will reach out. You do not have to reach out. Okay. So please do not break no contact. And if you're interested in finding out more about interest level from Doc Love, there is a link underneath every single video and you can check out his book, The System, and you can also read 10 free chapters. That's right, 10, before you decide whether you want to purchase the book or not. So check it out. And now, finally, let me know below in the comments who initiated the breakup. Was it you or your partner? And also, if you can comment with the word avoidant, if you want me to make more videos about avoidance. <laughs> and if enough people say yes, if they write avoidant below, then I will continue to make them. All right. And in the meantime, if you'd like my help to get your ex back, contact me at theartoflove.net and we will send you the rates. The direct link is underneath every single video and podcast. 
If you found this video helpful, please like, subscribe, and share. If you're listening to this as a podcast, please rate and review. And finally, remember that love inspires, empowers, uplifts, and enlightens.